Hello friends and welcome to the Concrete Tube channel, where it's all concrete tubes all the time. We are going to be building a fun uh, wall hanger of sorts. I want to do what looks like an industrial pipe that will sit against a wall and it'll look like an old pipe that's kind of sitting out of the wall. I don't know how to explain it much further. Regardless, I'm going to get right into it right away. I'm basing this around an eight, I think that's an in eight inside diameter. Regardless, anything around eight inches will work because you'll adjust this based on the size of the sauna tube and what you want to do with it. Ten inches. Now, and an eight, depending on how long you want these things to stick out of the wall. Now, what you want to do is when you cut this, measure over multiple times and just put marks on. Then using a piece of paper, put it between the marks, draw a line, and then using a razor blade, very gently, Cut that line. It's, it's, I wish it was a better way of doing this because I hate cutting sewn a tube. Now, once you've got these cut out, or how many you want to do, next thing you're going to do is using quarter inch EVA foam. This is an exercise mat that I had, and I had to go and sand all of the back surface off of it. This is one of those times where I wish I didn't have to use this stuff because, man, that took a while. And the reason you need to get rid of the surface is because you're going to be gluing to that. Now, once you've got this all cut out, and this is inch and a half, you're going to mark around the top inch and a half, contact cement all the way around, and on this contact cement all the way around. Now, here you can see on my eight inch version that I've already got this glued on, and you wanna do it onto obviously one side. We're going to be sealing this with caulking after, but before that we just need to get this going. Now, once you've got these guys all cut out, you are going to get another EVA mat and you're going to be cutting out two circles. Now, if you need to have a template, up here I did a video on this little doohickey mabobber. just helps drawing circles or large circles then using whatever form of uh, poison you want, go cut this thing out. I'm going to go cut this out in the bandsaw. And since I'm doing two of them, I'm going to do two copies because you need, if you're doing one, you need two full circles because you'll need a front and a back and then everything going on from there. So I'm going to go cut these out. Oh, I love the smell of rubber cement in the morning. That's all done as I was speaking about before. These are also all cut out now. Now, what you want to do is depending on, be careful I'm touching rubber cement now, depending on the radius of your pipe, what you want to do is you want to do another circle. Depending on the style of what you want to do, you're going to be doing these a little bit differently. But we're going to go over the first style first and I'll explain the second style after. The first style we're going to do is a block end pipe that's leaking. So we'll, you'll know what I'm talking about after. So the first thing I did is I drew a four inch radius circle using the same pinpoint that I used to draw the outside circle. And what that does is it allows it, so when I put this on, you will be able to see that that circle sits beautifully on the inside. Why did I do that? Because I need to know where to place this to get it central. And those lines down there, hopefully you can see it, gives me as close to center as possible. Once that's done, I just draw a circle. Let me get rid of that one and grab this one because this one's got the foam on the bottom already. And then what you do is once it's placed, draw a circle around it. That's going to give us where we're going to be putting our rubber cement. So we're going to be putting rubber cement in this area right here. I just have to go sand the surface off because once again, this stuff sucks for sticking down. We can see that our piece is coming together. I took this one out, I put a few divots in the surface just so it isn't so plain, cut a big chunk out of the middle of it to make it look like it's just exactly that, that it's broken because I'm going to be having some stuff coming out of here. Now, once you've got this top piece all done, I chamfered the edge just so slightly, just so it's not perfectly smooth and then I took a Dremel and got rid of that surface so I have something to glue to. Now, you put this onto your, your piece. That you've already got glued. Obviously you can see now that I've got this piece glued on and I'm going to be doing a little bit of silicone, not silicone work, but caulking work after. All I did now is I put this up here like so and I drew a pencil mark or pen mark. Then on this side 
I roughly went bigger than it and just cut this out and then chamfered the edge. I have to go out and see I've got two marks here. I'm just going to get that smoothed down so it looks really nice. Now I'm going to go and get this glued to the top here to give it that look of uh, the pipe has been broken because yeah, I guess I've got some more going on. I'll be back after this is glued. We're going to talk about one other thing though. Actually, before I go, it makes life a bit easier. These are a shameless personal plug, but at the same time, they're not because this is exactly why I designed these. These are 3D printed bolt heads. And on my website, I have this as a 3D printer file. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, you can take styrofoam circles, cut them in half and use them as bolt heads. It'll look just as good, but I like the way that these actually look and feel. Like here you can see right there how those bolts look when they're printed. It's complete immersion. You know, you look at it and you have it set up. Uh, speaking of which, I gotta do a quick video on that one. The caulking is all finished here. If you want to, you can do caulking along these lines but in reality, this thing sits so little out from the wall that it's not that big of a deal. Otherwise, put the caulking in. You can either wet your finger or spray it down and then just flatten it out. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want to end up with that nice seam in there so it looks a lot more flawless when we paint this whole thing. Now, you can see here is the second one, and I actually revised this from as I did it. So I pasted, I put the circle on as we did before, and I had actually cut this piece out, but I realized I didn't have to cut this piece out. I just have to get it all textured and chamfered to make it look like bars. And the reason for that is we take the second ring, which we do cut the center out of, and place it on here, and you end up with the grilled look. So this one's great to put like a light inside of this because then it's going to shine out. And it's going to put bars on the opposite wall. It can be very moody. Or you can put something in here with glowing eyes. It's just a really good base for hiding stuff and putting stuff in. Now, regardless, I'm going to go through. I'm going to get this all silicone, not silicone. It's been a long day. I'm going to go get it all caulked up and uh, get it all glued down. And we'll get it painted. Actually, next time you see this, it will be painted. Now the painting. I'm going to go over what I did to make this all work, just so you have a good idea. Because it's a matter of enjoying what you're doing oh can you tell what i've been up to uh enjoying what you're doing with the actual painting coming up with a really neat set of colors that comes together to look like rust or whatever finish you really want to now the first thing that i used was a base coat of rum raisin and as you see that was an off tint <laughs> next thing i have is i have got some just smaller acrylics the red ochre uh, the raw umber, which I went through a ton of it, and then burnt umber. Lots of browns, and now you'll see that this this uh, red ochre is actually really strong, but you kind of want it to be a bit strong because you're going to be complementing it with the other two colors to really get the color where you need it. Now, the most important thing that you're gonna need here is a sea sponge, and this one looks like a mess because I don't clean the sponge between colors because I like how it blends and mixes. And I got two different styles of sea sponges here. And you can see they all have colors on it depending on if I'm doing a larger area or if I'm doing ex accent work. Now, you can see that these bolts here, oh, and I'm feeling a bit silly. After I base painted it with the brown, I did a very light brushing of metallic satin bronze. It's all based on what you want to do in the end, but as it stands, I did this because I really like the color base that it gives, especially like to these nuts. Let's get one that I really like, like there. You can see how all the layerings of the colors really make, God, my fingers <laughs> absolute state. <laughs> oh, take me seriously, look at me, uh, I, I'm a mess. So, but you can see here how each one is different and just have fun, go crazy with it. And then you'll end up working on your big pieces. Now. You can see that the finish here is looking a lot different than what we saw before. I coated it with the brown, a little bit of gold, and then I just went through layering these colors together. And if I ended up with an area that was too bright, I just took the same sponge, took a different darker color, and went over top of it again. And you'll see that as you go along, that the effect you get is really, really neat. 
even up here you can see how this looks like an actual rusted uh, rusted pipe opening even on the other one here you can see it as well that all of that rust and you know if you're curious how rust forms look at a picture of an old piece of equipment and you'll see that some of the darker rust on the outside is browner the, the newer stuff is orange have fun with it and it's really hard to screw up on this like you can take as little or as long as you want to do this and you can see here once again all of the rust is on here and when you have it all finished it really does look like a real rust that is on here and from far away it looks even better now i want to make a, a flow that comes out of that pipe over there and what i decided to do with this was using draft stop silicone you can use regular silicone but this stuff really is malleable and resilient i, I love this stuff but and it dries decently quickly so what i did is i put a piece of styrofoam down or styrofoam tin foil oh it's gonna be one of those days and then what i do is i used a caulking gun to run the silicone out you start at the top you let it go down and you push it down onto the cellophane oh, cellophane <laughs> ah you push it down onto the tin foil and then you let it trail off on the full length here and what happens is you end up with this really cool looking flexible what looks like slime and what that's going to do is that's going to be coming out of that pipe over there and it's got a really cool look now the only thing i'm going to do is i've got some glow-in-the-dark paint that you've reactive i'm going to be painting the back of this so it literally looks like toxic waste coming out of the pipe i'm going to go do that and i'll be back with the final uh, reveal and any extra stuff that i come up with they do it and i'm going to go wash my hands because i'm a filthy monster be back. all right the hanger is just a two by four that I have cut at an angle and then cutting another slot in the middle, what it does is when you hang it on the wall, the nail goes into this slot and actually will pull this against the wall, giving you the flush fit that we are looking for. And it's really a great hanger system. All you have to do is when you do it, just make sure you get your radiuses of your pipe right. And I used a piece of paper and folded it in half to get to this template here works out great and a fantastic way of flush mounting lighter props on the wall and then all i did is i just wood glued it on there and i put a few little nails in the top with my air nailer but honestly if you glue it the glue should hold but just make sure that you take your dremel and knock that wax surface off the back before you do it because you'll never stick to that if you don't on the home run you're going to take all of your bolts now line them up i did a six pattern here or if you're doing rivets do the same thing or do more if you want to I just thought this was a nice nice distribution and then on the back here you put the bolt head with the pass through on it so it looks like the bolt is actually connected and this is where you tightened it up you can flip it around you could have the bolt heads on the front but i felt like having this one you do that to both of them and you are finished this ends up being a really nice way to add a, a look to something and the rust technique the way you do the pipe how it hangs on the wall all these are really good techniques for this or something bigger later on it's up to you and heck you can take and run with this as well there's so many things you could do you could cut a half a pipe put it on the wall here and have it running over so it looks like the pipe connects this is great wall decor and yeah you can do a lot with it heck you could even put a light in here and have it shine and what it'll do is it'll cast on the opposite wall the light coming out of this tube and you can see how on this one, how the slime looks like it is dripping out of the pipe with that silicone. That looks so cool. And once again, very simply, I just did the bolts straight through and you're done. And that's why we did the two plates because you want to make it look like these bolts are holding these two together. Eyes will spot that kind of thing. Anyways, thank you so much for hanging out with me on this very fun and interesting prop. Uh, thanks to all my subscribers, to everybody who comes and comments on my videos. It's greatly appreciated. And a really special thanks to my patrons, of which I now have another one, who is Joey and Alana. Thank you so much for supporting my work. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this fun romp into industrial piping. And I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great one all.